halal samosas in a nightclub. Subhanallah, you must be wondering what on earth is this? I tell you what, my brothers and sisters, there was a clip doing its rounds where there is a man who's picking up a prostitute. And then he stops over at a services at one of the restaurants and he asks for halal food. And a brother then comments and says, well, what are you wasting your time with halal food when you were the haram person? Okay. So I know what he's trying to say, but I want to tell you when a man is committing one sin and not two, don't encourage him to commit two. If he's conscious about his halal food, at least there's one thing he's doing right. Inshallah, he'll do more things right. And this one thing he's doing wrong, we agree. But when you tell him, what are you worried about that for? You know, He is. And if he is concerned about it, congrats. One day he will also be concerned about this by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the two matters are separate. It doesn't mean that because you're not in hijab, you should eat pork. Get the point. It doesn't mean that because you haven't prayed that you should now eat haram. It doesn't mean because you're involved in one sin that you should now involve in everything else. That is something very interesting. And this is why uh, in some countries, I give you an example even of South Africa, for example, there are some places that are known for gambling. And within that casino, they have strictly halal food. And when I was told about this, uh, they were laughing and they were saying, well, they've even got a little prayer area. Subhanallah. Did you know that sometimes the Muslims frequent these places? May Allah strengthen all of us and strengthen them and help them and guide all of us in whatever way we're going astray and bring us to the straight and narrow. But if someone went there and says, listen, I can come to this casino, but only if they have a prayer area. It sounds absurd, but from an Islamic ruling perspective, you cannot say because you're gambling, you, you can forget about your prayer. That's a sin. This would be another sin, you know. So he's sinning one sin. Don't make him sin two. You can't say that because you're, you're in this nightclub or, or you're gambling, you're in the casino, that why do you have all halal certified food here? Do you get the point? So inshallah, let's try and work on our weaknesses and let's try and make sure that uh, we shouldn't promote uh, the notion that because you're involved in one sin, forget about everything else. No, people people take step by step, inshallah. You know, it's like the hijab. When a person wears the hijab, sometimes they'll come step by step. You know, they say uh, someone's wearing really tight clothes and that's not called hijab. It's not the ideal hijab, but don't encourage them to rip that off as well, because then it's even worse. They're coming there. They're getting there stage by stage, inshallah. So it may not be the ideal hijab, but they've covered, they've started. The first step is taken. Your duty is to encourage them to move closer and to better themselves and closer to the ideal. And one day they may get somewhere, subhanallah, because of your encouragement. But if you're going to say, sister, as it is, you're showing half of your legs. Why don't you just take everything out and show everything? No, that's wrong. Oh brother, you're showing half your backside, just take it off. No, that's wrong. Notice how I gave both examples because hijab is not just for one. We all need to improve on our dress code, inshallah. May Allah bless all of us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.